There's been all kinds of reports of Sigma Pi Epsilon about a person that hung themselves in one of the rooms. So, throughout the whole fraternity house, there's been all kinds of things going on that the people were kind of like upset and scared about. So, we decided to go down and try to help them out and find out what we can find for them. there since the old house. That window. There used to be a radiator right here that she supposedly tied a rope to and jumped out. Tell them to deal with the clock. I sold that girl. Yeah, the uh, the president before in the old house used to set an alarm clock there every day and it changed time every day. Really? Like it would just jump out. But it's not doing it now. I, I just set it there actually to pick up. I was like, hmm, I wonder if it'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we do that a lot too. We'll set ghost stuff yeah. just to see if we can kick and do something. My name is uh, Danny Mathis. I'm a junior. I live in the SIGEP house here. Uh, I guess it was right after we came back from spring break a few days ago. I was walking up the, the stairs and I got to the top floor. The third floor is where my floor is. And my room's right there to the left. And out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw something in my peripheral vision. And so, you know, obviously you see something peripheral, you go immediately to it and you look. And I thought out of my peripheral, I saw like a, maybe a black dress with white polka dots on it. And then whenever I looked, it was nothing there, but I heard like a shuffle back or something. And but I, it was like 2 a.m. and I was, I mean, obviously I was tired, so it might have been nothing, but then again. I was hoping it wasn't safe. This is where we all heard footsteps the Halloween night. It sounds literally like someone's high heels were walking on a board back and forth to the attic. Okay. The weird thing that I just thought about is that in the old house, the entrance to the attic was in this room. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's how that used to be the only entrance to the attic was in this room, so that's it's kind of odd in here. Were well, you? Can you were here present for that? I uh, was. I was for the footsteps oh, or for yeah. the footsteps? Yeah, we, a lot of us yeah. were. How much long would you say that lasted? It was. It was a few it was, hours. It was a few hours. <laughs> really? Nonstop. Yeah. Just it literally sounded like high heels on a wood floor, and it would go down and kind of fade, and then it'd come back, it'd be real, real long. So I was walking around, yeah. whatever it was. Huh? My name's Ryan. I live at uh, Sigma Phi Epsilon. Uh, one night when not, when everyone was kind of gone formal except for maybe three of us, I was upstairs and uh, heard some uh, heard some noises in the bathroom. It sounded like a girl maybe talking on her cell phone or something like that. So I just went to go see, check it out, and see who it was. And uh, there was no one in there, but the shower was on. That was just really creepy because it's nothing that's never happened before. The shower handles are pretty tight. It's a brand new house. So, I mean, like, there's nothing loose, you know, it was just really eerie to me, kind of stayed away from there for a while. Just show you real quick, these are the best steps. This is where, see, this is our freaky thing. This is where the, I mean, this is apparently where they always hear the voices coming down. Okay. Look, if they come down the steps and they'll stop right here, and they'll hear me. And then they'll turn back around. But this is the spot where This is, they're this, they're, these are the steps. Okay. So, you're um, on this floor right here? Yeah, third floor. It's always third floor. It's on. It's always in the tallest spot. Well, I'm myself apparently up there. Right, so. Um, Alright, one of the nights I woke up, you know, I had to pee pretty bad. So I was in the bathroom and I was in the, in one of the stalls, I think the far, the one close to the wall, and I was in there, and it was late, and there, like, it was like a weeknight, there was nobody up. And it was, I was in there and it just sounded like somebody took a pitcher of water and started dumping it in the stall, like, next to me. I was like, I mean, that's pretty creepy. And I opened the door up, you know, to look at it. And the water hadn't been moving or anything, or there was nobody in there. The door was closed. Uh, I, I ran out of that pretty. On Saturday night, uh, was that like three or four days ago, we were sitting in the basement resource room, and it must have been about one in the morning, something like that. It wasn't very late, and uh, the door to the resource room was locked from the inside, so like no one on the outside could have touched it or opened it or anything like that unless they had a master key. And there were windows, so I mean we obviously would have seen someone. And uh, without turning the lock or turning the, the handle of the door, it opened itself and just kind of swung a little bit. So me and my girlfriend uh, stepped into this house, uh, just decided to stay the night here when no one else was here. It was over a holiday break, and I live up on the second floor, and we stepped in and it felt fine at first, and then I started getting this eerie, like, just vibe, of, like, body vibe when I stepped into my room, and, like, there was all these, like, kinking noises and all this stuff that I didn't really think about at the time, but 
as we, we kind of walked around just because we were bored it was like nine at night and just we started hearing a lot of weird things like noises and voices and just things that you kind of knew weren't normal in like just like pipes and stuff like that but we <clears throat> we ended up just splitting apart for a second she went to my room and I went to my I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth and I just I got this really eerie feeling and when I when I started brushing my teeth I hear this noise in the stall right next to me and I just hear this like puking noise. It was really great to investigate Sigma Pi Epsilon because when we got there the residents were a little hesitant at first but they were interested in what we were doing but after we really sat there for a minute then we started getting multiple stories from multiple different residents and they just really opened up to us and were very welcoming. Alright I want the uh, Omni Mic Company attic the other Omni in room 303, so that way we got back up in case the tape runs out. And then we need to run EMFs downstairs because there's a high energy source down there with a lot of the wire stuff. But when I walked into the basement, I got a little dizzy. So I want to make sure to just find out what that could be, you know, because it could be the wires or it could be something else. So we need to concentrate on just the hot spots. We're not going to, you know, vary off of other those spots. So. Let's uh, get the stuff rolling so we can get this all turned dark so we can rock and roll. All right? Can you come right here? Turn the shower on for us? Turn the shower on. Just like I did. I think it's feeling like there's something in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep wanting to look behind us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's weird. What? You look like jumping. No, it's not doing it. Oh, did you see it? Yes. That core my eye. Can you make the, the needle jump again? <gasps> I, they had it in the guys. I thought it was. We gotta go to the dock here. Doors, I'm gonna open it. What is it? No, it sounded like something that hit the, yeah. the floor. It's on the floor. Yeah, you guys, look. You think the floor? Yeah. There's like a or something that hit the floor. So for something hard, that would make that noise on the floor. The door may be slamming against the back of the stall. Can you make that noise again? Definitely, I would say in the bathroom. That's what it sounded like to me. It sounded like in the bathroom to me. Too. Pardon me. Yeah. During our investigation, we were in the bathroom on the third floor of the Sigma Pi Epsilon house. We kept hearing noises through there, but they were kind of like faint, so we didn't really take them as anything much. And then all of a sudden, we heard one noise that came from the bathroom on the other side of it, and we rushed to go find out what it was, and there was nothing there or nobody there that could actually cause that noise in that area. This is Chris, Josh, and Justin. We're up in the third floor shower area. Is there anybody up here that would like to talk to us? Can you give us a sign of your presence? If you're in here, we would like to speak to you. Is that the Maybe window? That's the window. Lindsay. I suppose it's the one she hung herself from. This is uh, where they said that they used to have a clock here and they kept having to reset the clock the next morning every day. Yep. Right there. They put the clock there and they had to reset it the next morning. Can you uh, change the clock for us? Make the time different or turn it off? Did you hang yourself from that window? Did you die in this room?
Tell us your name. Are you in the attic? Do you walk around up there in the high hills? Was this your room when you lived here? Did your parents die in the war? I don't know one of the stories, sorry, is that her parents died. Uh, or that her boyfriend broke up with her and that's why she killed herself. Oh, really? It wasn't because of the parents? It's uh, both stories, or I don't know which one's right. Okay. Did your boyfriend break up with you? Is that why you killed yourself? Can you give us some sign of your presence by tapping on the wall? I heard that there's been tapping on the windows. Was that you? Can you do it again? Can you tap on the windows? Can you make the radio do that again? Or my lights go up again? Did your lights go up? All the way to the red. Really? Just as I was stepping over to this step. We'll see if you can go. Wait a minute. I'm just going to red and slow that. No? Are you here with us? Are you wanting to stop? Wanting us to stay away from this stairway? that uh, lit up our devices here? If it is, you can, you can tell us. We can communicate through our recorders and, and through our devices. Can you make a noise for us? Can you tell us your name? Can you tell us if you killed yourself here? This is on the room. Yeah, it's not uh, just going oh, um, look. Just got fuzzy. What that got fuzzy? Mm hmm Did it? Mm. Set that over there. This yeah. is where here the knock came to open it up real quick and the guy was reaching for the handle. Uh -huh. and, he's, and he was like, uh, something about How'd you know it was coming? Knock on the door? He's like, I didn't knock on the door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, well he opened it right before the guy got to the door and he's like, How'd you know it was coming? And he goes, You just knocked on the door and the guy's like, I didn't yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. got here. It's 
Is there anybody in here that would like to communicate with us? Can you tell us your name? Let's go on down this way and check out this far end first. I'll bet that's giving off some EMFs. No? Mm -mm. Damn, see what you what you meant here, yours does. Nada. Is it on again? You have to turn it on. Amazing. Yes. Barely. This is. There we go. Barry. Fuse box. So we were we were once by that. There's like a fuse box in every floor. It seems like. Yeah. So I mean that that thing was burying the needle too. That whole area right there, especially by room three fifteen, could be you know feeling that paranoia or something or thinking they're hearing stuff like knocking on the door. Oh, my flashlight's flickering. It was there. I mean, my, what was going on? Where did it go? If that was you, you could communicate with us. Can you tell us uh, why you're still here? His uh, radio did that. I went just like that, okay, and, then, and the light lit up. I know you said the camera got a little worried. I got fuzzy. Ooh, that's uh, actually a good bit of Oh, we just got fuzzy again. Are you sure? Just maybe not be able to focus because I'm too close. Yeah, it could be. Did you come back up the stairwell? Right here. Yeah. But it's dropping down here. I bet it's the wiring in the 
the wall to yeah. that probably. It's probably a yeah, light, light switch, switch right probably. Yeah. We're on the third floor and Angie actually started getting a reading on her EMF detector coming through the wall. Really? Knock on the door and see if anybody's in there. This is incredible. See if it goes on the other side. If we do it to the side of the lift door, I'm like, that side or this Nothing side? Wrong. Yep. Okay. It's a light switch. Light switch? On the inside, yeah. All right. Gotta be. I'll give some here. But I bet it's because of the yep, that's right here. So this whole this whole walkway from the middle all the way down here has high EMF fields all the way down. So this is almost like a, a panic room, this whole area. I mean, people are going to feel paranoid all the way down this hallway. But we can always check. You know, is there anybody here to like to communicate with us? Can you tap on the wall three times? Give us some sign of your presence? Stand right in front of my camera. Lindsay's gonna, gonna take a picture of you. So stand there and smile on the count of three, alright? One, two, three. Gosh. Oh, did you see that? Oh, it's an orb. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, let me take another one right in a row. Alright, we're gonna take your picture again. So please stand in front of Angie and Lindsay, and on the count of three, smile real big for us, okay? One, two, three. Look, same spot. There's something up there. Is it shining on a wall or something? Um, it could be reflecting off this too as well. It was this in the same exact spot, so I guess it, that means it's did go after it. Yeah. Feel about tonight? I think the investigation really well, but we were able to debunk a lot of stuff uh, due to high, very high EMF fields. So we're going to have to let them know what we found and go on and review the rest of the evidence to see if there's anything else there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to say it was just mainly paranoia. Alright, uh, we went through and did a lot of houses stuff like that, did investigations stuff like that. Of course, you know, when we come through, we're looking for to debunk some a lot of the claims stuff like that to try to disprove that there's ghosts and stuff, you know. There could be a lot of natural causes and stuff like that. Um, when we're, what we notice is in about 90% of the areas where the claims were going on and stuff, we on our meters, we've got a lot of high, very high EMF areas, which can be caused from fuse boxes, um, not uh, wires that are not shielded enough and stuff like that. When you're exposed to that high of EMF fields, it can cause like paranoia. You can hallucinate and hear things. Okay. And it's, it's really unhealthy. So I want to kind of show you some of the, the places um, that we got the readings to show you what readings we're actually getting. So that way just you and everybody is aware of, you know, if you're in this area, then you might hear things or get headaches. I don't know if there's been any reports of people getting headaches and stuff like that, but it can cause a lot of just physical okay. stuff to you. Um, like just for instance in this hallway, a normal reading of an EMF field, um, usually three and under, is to where it won't be as bad of an effect to you. But anything three and over can be kind of hazardous to you, you know, just healthy wise. Okay. So just like in this hallway right now, Especially by this box right here, we're getting 35 on the event meter. Now, if the normal, if the normal rating is uh, like three and under, it's the healthy part, and the three or over is unhealthy. But you can, you can imagine what kind of effects is happening when you get a 35 to 50 just walking down this hallway. Okay. And when you're exposed to EMFs, you know, just temporarily, it'll just give you kind of headaches. But if you're exposed to them for very long periods of time, that's when, you know, hallucinations and, you know, really serious, like, physical things can happen to you. Yourself. Okay.
Hi, this is Mike McDonald with Kinder Moon Paranormal Society. Today I'm going to show you our white noise generator. With this device, we can create white noise, pink noise, and even brown noise, which sounds like this. Through that, we can set this up in a room, and hopefully the ghosts or spirits can draw from that noise and manifest some kind of voice that we capture on our digital voice recorder, which we call EVP, Electronic Voice Phenomena.